right, just coach, give an opening statement and take, take some questions. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, you know, we're four days away uh, from opening day. We're excited about the season. Um, got a lot of guys back, uh, added some new pieces. Um, and uh, excited, right? It's been a long journey. We've played in the Bahamas. We've played in uh, Juarez. We've played in Chihuahua. We've played in Albuquerque. Uh, and Monday night, we finally get to play in the dawn, right? So uh, went over there this morning, man. They're putting the, the court down um, and then uh, getting everything ready. So exciting times and uh, looking forward to the season. Just a friendly reminder, too, November 10th is Kayla Thornton Day. Uh, we're going to celebrate it. Uh, I got to meet Kayla the other day at the scrimmage, uh, and uh, Kayla could play for us right now. Um, but uh, Keith's point, anytime you have a champion uh, from your hometown, not just university, but hometown, uh, it, it needs to be celebrated, right? So I'm with Keitha. we got to keep pushing that in the media uh, because that's going to be an exciting day for her uh, and I know for women's basketball in our community. Two exhibition games under your belt. Just what did you like from those competitions? What are you hoping to bring? Yeah, uh, we didn't get a whole lot out of the Chihuahua game. Uh, just to be quite honest, the level of competition wasn't there. The experience was incredible. Um, it was great uh, for uh, us uh, to represent our university over there. And so there was a lot of... Uh, uh, of the good things that happen with that and the relationships that we continue to build with our fan base uh, south of us. Uh, so th that was great, but the basketball wasn't good. Uh, Monday night was terrific. Uh, you know, to play a team uh, that's obviously picked second in the Mountain West and won the Mountain West Conference Tournament uh, the year before. Um, and uh, to go in there and play, uh, you know, the box score said over 10,000 people there. So a great environment. Uh, the first time in an exhibition game uh, what was incredible for us. So we got a good gauge of where we're at. Um, and, and got to see some good things, got to, got to see some things that we obviously need to improve on and have a week to uh, improve on here in practice. But uh, I thought the exhibition with New Mexico was terrific for us. The end of last year felt like a little bit of a turning point. What do you need to do to build on that and what makes this year? Successful? Yeah, you got to keep the momentum going, especially early, right? I think it's important that uh, we gain some momentum uh, with our fan base and, and with our community and our university, uh, the way we finished uh, the season. And, uh, you know, we got to continue that hopefully early in the season um, to take advantage of that right and uh, there's no secret uh, the Don's a lot tougher place to play when there's butts in the seats and, and it's crowded and there's a lot of passion and you know I, I think it's one of the best home court advantages in the country uh, when when there's people there right and so uh, you know we've got to continue to do our job of winning games we struggled last year on the road I, I don't want to keep bringing that up because it's a different team right and we've spent a lot of time uh, we had road day uh, road game Fridays uh, all summer where we took Friday off campus and uh, you know tried to, to handle that we've obviously again been to the Bahamas Chihuahua and Juarez, again, taking our team to different, and Albuquerque uh, to try to get better on the road. And we're going to have an opportunity against Utah Valley early in the season to go on the road. But, um, you know, I, I think that's one thing that we've got to get better. We were really good the first year on the road, uh, and we struggled, uh, obviously, the last two years on the road. And, and it's difficult to win on the road. Uh, in, in college athletics, uh, we've got a lot of great environments, uh, non-conference and conference play, tough places to play, but we got to figure that out. And I think we did later in the year, and hopefully that uh, carries over. How important is a message that I see on t-shirts that practice about the 10 minutes uh, and how, you know, has it, has it yeah. faded? Do they understand that they were 10 minutes away from going to the... To yeah, the it's head? a friendly reminder, but I mean, we coach at UTEP, right? Like, uh, I was laughing with Coach Patino about that their night in New Mexico. They, they were just like, I, thought, I think we finished fourth last year, if I'm correct, tied for fourth uh, in, in league play. They kind of finished that way in the Mountain West, and then they made the run to the conference tournament championship, and they won it, right? And got to go to the NCAA tournament. We lost uh, in the championship game, and so they're hanging banners. And you look at both programs, uh, when, you know, when you're the head coach at UTEP, you know, they don't celebrate conference championship losses, right? Uh, you walk in that gym and facility, there's so much tradition and history, and they only hang banners for championships. And so it's just a friendly reminder to our guys that uh, if you want to be remembered here, uh, you got to win championships. you got to get to the NCAA tournament. It's the objective and goal uh, here at UTEP every, every single season. And so uh, we were 10 minutes and 33 seconds away. Uh, so it's just a reminder each and every day from the summer to the fall that we're fighting for those 10 minutes and 33 seconds. Now, it's a new journey, right? It's a new team. It's a new journey. It's a new season. We've got a tough competitive league. Uh, there's no guarantees that we're going to be back uh, in that game. But I think you as a coach, you just got to find different ways to, again, to motivate. I think it's a big reason why nine guys came back uh, on this team is to, you know, there's some unfinished business they feel uh, that they want to try to achieve. And so, again, it's just another way to try to motivate. And you're, you're always trying to find ways to motivate uh, these young men. And uh, it was just a daily reminder that we could wear on our shirt and they could wear on their shirt uh, that, again, we're fighting for those 10 minutes and 33 seconds because ultimately our job here is to hang banners. Coach, you mentioned there's some things that you want to see right come Monday. So what are those adjustments that you'd like to see? 
Yeah, um, you know, coming out of the exhibition against New Mexico, um, I, I think there were some things obviously we did well, some things we have to work on. I, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't really pleased with our offensive play. Uh, we've spent a ton of time on that in the summer and fall because it's something we have to get better at uh, is scoring the basketball. I heard Keith say that. When you make shots, it makes the game a whole lot easier. Uh, and it makes you look like a better coach uh, when you can make shots. And, and I was a little discouraged with, with our offense. Um, we were much better in the second half than we were the first half. And I think that was the first time we'd seen that level of competition. I think we settled into it. But uh, I, I want to see us better offensively. I think this team's going to shoot the ball uh, a lot better. Obviously, we Went 10 from 11 from the free throw line. That was encouraging. We got to get there a lot more. Um, but but um, um, you know, I, I really think we have to make a jump offensively this season, and it starts obviously on Monday. Uh, we got our butt kicked on the glass the second half. Uh, rebounding is a big concern for me with this team. We did a great job the first half. We did in the second half. Uh, that's going to be something that we're going to be um, you know talking about all season. I, I, I fear, and hopefully uh, for the positives, not the negatives. But it's something that we've got to improve on. Uh, but but. But more importantly, I just want to, to us to go out there and experience the Don, right? We've traveled a bunch and we've got some new guys. It'll be the first time to ever play in front of the Don, in front of our fans. And so excited that they get to experience that. And then obviously I know the returners are excited to, to play in front of our fans. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing is winning, right? we got to win the game. We can't look ahead, right? Sol Ross is an opponent, a capable opponent. They uh, will come in here. They have some kids, I think, from the community. If uh, I haven't looked at their roster yet. but And, and they have a former player. Uh, I was told yesterday, Cam Clardy, who played for us two or three years ago is, is playing for them. So anytime those teams come in, they're motivated. This is their Super Bowl. And so uh, obviously we have a lot of work to do in the next four days to get ready for them. You had four returning players in the starting lineup against New Mexico, mm -hmm. and then you also had Devin Barnes. Can you just speak about what he brings to the table? That maybe yeah, doing? he might not start if he keeps guarding the way he guarded uh, Monday night. You know, we might change that up. But uh, Devin, Devin, uh, is a proven player, right? He's won everywhere he's been, from high school to junior college to last year at Tarleton. I think they were picked ninth in the conference at Tarleton last year, and they finished second um, in, in league play. He averaged 14 points a game. He shot 40% from the three. Uh, I think he had 90 assists and 30-something turnovers, so he values the basketball. Um, and again, he's just a winner, right? Uh, he, he makes, uh, in baseball terminology, he hits the single all the time, right? He's not looking to hit home runs. And uh, that there's a comfort level as a coach when you have a player like that. So, um, and then he's a leader. You know, we, we have a bunch of leaders in our locker room. We have five seniors that obviously are going to lead us this year. And then you have David Terrell, who's grown into that leadership role. And I think Devin is right there with him. And so uh, he gives us another guard. Uh, on the floor that can make good decisions and can obviously score the basketball and again a proven player he's proven it at, at in the whack um, that he's um, that, that that he can that he can play at this level and uh, I'm excited about him I, I think if he plays the way we, that he's capable of playing for us he could be an all conference type player right when, when we talk about March and if, if we want to have the season we want to have he needs to play uh, at that level um, and so uh, excited about him I know he's excited to be at UTEP too he's from El Paso uh, he was born here um, military kid uh, went to elementary school here and so I know you know him being back I know he's real excited he was actually at the uh, help me out Darby I think it was Memphis right Memphis UTEP in the championship game in 2000 yeah. 12 or something maybe like that um, you know and his uncle played for uh, for for Memphis and so he was here he's seen the energy he's seen the dawn uh, and obviously grew up around it so I know Monday night will be big uh, big for him uh, KJ Thomas he came in the game and just yeah. I, mean, I don't remember exactly what run it was but he came in and started making some shots uh, can you just speak about, I mean, obviously still, uh, he's a freshman, mm -hmm. right? He's coming in, making things happen. What do you hope to see from him? Yeah, um, you know, freshman years are tough, right? They're roller coaster years. They're, they're, there's ups and downs, but uh, again, he, a little bit like sound redundant here. But he's a winner, right? He won a ton of games in high school. He's a great kid to coach. He takes coaching. Uh, he gets better each and every day. He's got a great mom and dad. Um, his high school coach just passed away Monday night uh, of brain cancer. Uh, he got diagnosed uh, late January last year uh, before they made the state tournament run um, and uh, passed away M M uh, Monday. What was tough, right? I got a phone call about 4 o'clock in the morning in Albuquerque, and KJ was really close. In fact, he flew back home today. Uh, the funeral's tomorrow. Uh, if so, so for him to handle all that and then go play the way he did Monday night, the first time to be uh, on the floor in a in, uh, – an incredible environment, obviously very passionate fan base there uh, with a lot of adversity and a lot of things going on to get thrown in the fire uh, like that. I thought he handled it well. I think he played 15 minutes. Um 
And he never turned the ball over one time. Uh, and Dent, who was guarding him, is, uh, you know, has a chance to be the Mountain West Player of the Year. So we threw him in the fire for sure. Uh, I thought he handled it well. Um, he was actually in the game towards the end. Uh, he closed the game uh, because I think half our team had fouled out. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of choices. But those opportunities are good for him, right? And uh, I think KJ is going to be a special player for us. Uh, we knew that when we recruited him. Uh, I think he will earn minutes uh, this year. Um, and then what he does with those minutes will determine the rest. But uh, he, he, he's going to be a good player player for us this year and then down the road I think he has a chance to be a really really good player. If you have the type of season you want to have what would one right? Well that's a great question. Um, Got to win on the road right? I think that's uh, that, that's a big thing for us. We got to protect home floor. We got to win here at the dawn, and we got to we got to win on the road. Uh, I think when you start looking at things, I think rebounding is going to be important all year. Uh, we just don't have the length and size. Losing Tay and Zid, they were bigger guards. We're a little bit smaller uh, this year. I think rebounding is going to be key for us. Uh, and then can we score the basketball? We're, we're, we're going to play defense. I think people understand that and know that. We turned New Mexico over 25 times uh, the other night, and that's a veteran team, and, and it should have been 30 turnovers um, if we'd have gone for two hands instead of one uh, on some stuff. But we got to be able to score the basketball. So I think the three-point line percentage, uh, you know, can we, can we make more threes this year than we have in the past? Um, rebounding the basketball, value in the basketball, assist to turnover ratio. Uh, you know, we only turned it over 11 times the other night. That's a positive. That's moving in the right direction. That's something that had to get fixed. Uh, so I think all those things. Uh, and then, Brett, you know, I think our veterans have to play like veterans, right? Um, we have some kids that have been in our program four years, three years. We have a lot of guys back with two years. We have a lot of experience. We have five seniors. We're, we're an older team in, in some regards. So uh, they got to play like veteran players, right? And so uh, I, I think all those will, will play, into, play into it. Do you feel you have enough big men for downstairs to be able to get the rebound? Um, yeah, I like our bigs. You know, I, I do. I, they're different, right? Um, you know, Kevin Kalu, obviously, I think is one of the best defensive players in the country. Uh, he, the way he guards a ball screen is as disruptive as, as anybody in the country. And that's what makes us special defensively, and we don't talk about that enough. Uh, you know, he does all the stuff that nobody talks about in the media. His, his, he, we'll never write about him in the media, right? But everything he does affects winning. Uh, and, of course, he wants to score the basketball more. What kid doesn't, right? But he does all those things that are unselfish, that are about winning in our program and we, we, we celebrate Kevin Clue every day in our program probably don't celebrate him enough uh, publicly but uh, um, you know Kevin's been in our program four years and uh, he's got to do a good job of not fouling this year you know in the exhibition he had two fouls in the first minute because he's important to us being on the floor so uh, and then you got Derek Hamilton who I think when he's in shape which he's not right now he's got to get in better shape uh, as we as we progress he played thir 12 minutes the other night and was five for seven from the floor right he can really score the basketball he's got great hands Hands, great feet. Um, really played well for us down the stretch last uh, last year, which was a big reason for our run. Um, he's got to continue to work on his uh, conditioning, but when he does, uh, you know, he, he, he can be a factor out there. So I like both of those guys. Uh, and then we're figuring out, you know, Bob Ball's coming along. He had surgery uh, right when we got back from the Bahamas. So he's just right now getting back to, to practice. Last week was kind of his first time to really go live and practice. So he's obviously a work in progress. Uh, we've added DC, a junior college transfer, late in the summer. Uh, so he missed all summer, but we're trying to integrate him. He didn't play the other night, but um, he's moving in the right direction that we can maybe put him in there and play some small ball uh, with. But uh, uh, you know, I, I like Derek and Kevin. They obviously have a ton of uh, experience, uh, and I, I'm very comfortable with both those guys. Anything else, Coach? Appreciate it.